Give me some examples of how you do the neural imaging or what's an experimental protocol. So we have various ones. I mean, right now we're doing something actually looking at olfaction. So olfaction is, you know, it's one of our evolutionarily oldest senses. It's the only sensory system that can go straight to your cortex. Normally it has to go through the thalamus, which That's is right. this relay station, and then to the cortex. Yeah, the bulbs are actually extensions of the brain. Exactly. Right? So it's really direct to the brain, but much of what's happening with, with smell is, is affecting our behavior, but outside of consciousness. So for example, there are studies where if you put um, like a faint lemon cleaner in the air, and you give people an experiment to do, and then you give them cookies at the end, they're more likely to clean up their cookies than if there was no scent in the air. And, they have no idea consciously that this is happening. And so right now we're looking at olfaction and how it affects anxiety. Um, so there's studies, for example, that if I co collected sweat from someone who was in an anxious situation, like about to jump out of a plane or take a big exam and collect sweat from a person who's just working out at the gym, you give these two scents to somebody else while they're in the scanner. They smell them and consciously they can't tell the difference from the anxiety sweat versus the neutral sweat. But we can see their brain, there is differences. And so when they smell someone else's anxious sweat, actually a whole empathy network in their brain lights up. So even emotional signals can get through to us just from odor. Um, and we can only you know this. Do you think there are peptides or something? Yeah, That's... and it's hard to say exactly what, it, what is the, the mechanism. Um, we know it's, it's some kind of neurochemical mechanism that's coming through that's affecting a person. But it's just an example of that. It's not just through the olfactory realm, but even visual realm. You know, information is getting into our brain all the time, even if we're not consciously processing it. It's affecting our emotions. It's affecting how we are interacting with other people. And so the reason we look at what's happening in the brain is because the person can't verbally report what's really going on, but the brain can tell more of a story. So in a sense, we are being monitored by and we are monitoring others and we are being regulated by and we are regulating others uh, yes. just through these signals that we are not even conscious of. Absolutely, yeah. And that would have huge uh, implications for how we should be behaving in the world. Yeah. Because my state of uh, anxiety could be affecting everybody around me, right? Uh, 100%. And, and not only, also how you look, your face,